located here at 212 Mulberry Street in the city of Evansville, Indiana. You can contact us through one of our websites at Bethany Apostolic uh, 212 at gmail.com or Bethany Apostolic Evansville.org. You can tune in to us tonight beginning every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. every Tuesday night and Sunday mornings <clears throat> at 11 a.m. Tonight, we will be talking about several things tonight. I've been in church now for, I've been in church now for 40 some odd years. And through my personal experience, I've noticed that whenever we begin to talk about offenses, we talk about or we talk to one person pretty much. And that is the one that's been offended. So tonight, we are, we're going to not only talk about the offended, but we're going to talk about the offender. In so many Bible classes, we find ourselves talking to the offended person, the one that has been on the receiving end of the offense. And there's a lot of scriptures that support what we must do if we are offended. And I agree with the scriptures. Uh, one writer says that if you're offended, it says that we're to be ye angry and, 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 and sin not. That is dealing a lot with the offended. Also, we find that uh, uh, one writer says in Matthew that uh, forgive us our trespasses. Uh, I'm sorry, in Matthew where it says, moreover, if thy brother trespass against thee. And that, again, is dealing with the offended. And also in Psalms where it says, forgive us our, our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Again, that is dealing with the offended. And there are a lot of scriptures. There are a lot of scriptures that deal with the offended as far as what the offended should do if someone offends them. And, and I agree with all the scriptures and that the offended must forgive. In order for us to go to heaven, we have to learn how to forgive. But what about the offender? Do they get a free ticket? Do they get a free ride? So a person that goes out and offends someone, very seldom do churches and teachers and pastors talk about the offender. So tonight, we're going to talk not only about the offended, but we're going to talk about the offender. Because I really believe that the, the, that the offender has just as much, if not more, responsibility not to offend. So when we look at the offender, the offender seems to just storm into our lives for no reason at all. He, he breaks into our lives and he just calls havoc. He comes into our lives uninvited. No one asked him to come in. And when he comes in, he, 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 he brings havoc with him. Uh, 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 he, he causes so much havoc that so often it takes years and years for the damage to be repaired. So tonight, we're going to talk about the offender. Once he goes into a person's life, once he goes into a person's household and offends, we're going to make the offender aware of how difficult it is to repair the damage that he has caused. So often the offender, he will go into a person's life, offend, cause havoc, cause damage, cause all kind of carnage within a person's life, and it's going to take that person a long, long time to clean up and repair the damage that has been caused to them. And so often the offender will go and cause more damage in someone else's life. Amen. Not realizing the damage that they have caused or not caring about how much damage they have caused. So tonight we're going to talk about the offender and the responsibility he has not to continue going out offending. We're going to talk about the offender in such a way where we're going to make him aware 
how difficult it is to repair a lot of the damage that the offender does. And the offender does a lot of damage. And, 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 and once we offend someone, once we offend someone, once we are the offender and goes through and causes all this havoc, a writer in Proverbs let us know how difficult it is to repair the damage, to, to repair the carnage that we have caused. So tonight, by making the offender aware, we're going to try and make the offender aware how much damage will be caused and, and let them know or make them aware that it's not worth the effort to go back and try to repair the damage that you've caused. It'd be much easier not to cause damage at all. So we're going to try to put a, a, a thought in the offender's heart to let them know that it's not worth, it's not worth all of that. So if you will, turn with me tonight. <clears throat> Turn with me tonight to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to be reading out of Proverbs tonight. Proverbs chapter 18. And it's only going to be one verse tonight that we're going to be dealing with. One verse we're going to be talking from. And that would be Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19. Let's read that together. It says this. A brother offended. Now, this is talking about the offender. This is talking about the offender. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Notice that. He said, if we offend someone, if we are the offender, this is the work that will be ahead of us, trying to win that brother or try, trying to win that sister back. I understand tonight this, this may be talking about a brother, brother someone that's in your own family. But we're a church family here tonight also. So I really believe that when they say brother, it's dealing with us. Not only is it dealing with the brothers here in the church, it's dealing with the sisters also. Because not only do the brothers have a sharp tongue, but a lot of sisters have a sharp tongue. Do they not? Sure, sure. And, 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 and ever so often, we tend to slip up and say things and do things without any regard of what we're doing. So, when we look at Proverbs chapter 18, we're going to go back and finish reading that in a minute. When we look at Proverbs chapter 18, this is dealing from just mere talking and maybe to an offense that will put a person in jail. So it's dealing with a large, it's dealing with a wide range of offenses. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and finish reading that. Proverbs chapter 18, at verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Those are some strong words. So, this is the problem. This is a struggle that the offender has. Once he repents and wants to go back and make amends, this is the job that he has to do. A brother offended is harder to be won. Notice now, he said, it's harder to be won than a strong city. In other words, what the writer is saying here, it all depends on the offense. Some offenses are going to take more effort, going to take more work than others. But still, it's going to be difficult. From the smallest to the biggest, from the least to the largest, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be almost like trying to win over a strong city. In other words, it's going to be almost an impossible job. If you try to win over a strong city, there would be battles all the way through. You're going to have to fight, and once you enter the city, it's still going to be a struggle. In other words, when we look at ourselves and someone is offended, 
They may shake your hand and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, but they are still going to have some residual feelings. In other words, like we said, it's going to be some ashes, it's going to be some dust left in their lives. That wall will still be up. They will not be able to trust you or me in the same way as they did before. A strong city. They're going to be somewhat reserved. Once the damage has been done by the offender, the writer says that it is harder to win a strong city. A brother offended, it's harder. It's harder to be one. And, and, and what makes this so devastating, saints, is that if I have high hopes in someone, if I look up to them, and they break my heart, either by their words or by their actions, that is going to cause a lot of damage in my life. A strong city. A strong city is one where you have to break into, uninvited. And that's the way Solomon is putting this tonight. Let me state this tonight also. When we look at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, they are not promises of God. Proverbs are not promises of God. No, they're not. Solomon wrote a lot of the books in Proverbs. They are not the promises of God. What Proverbs are, they are, there are two things. They're a human gener generalization, human generalization, and they are divine generalization. That if I do A, chances are B will happen. Solomon asked God for several things. He asked God for what? Wisdom and what else? Knowledge. And God blessed him with wisdom and knowledge. And because of the blessing that God gave upon Solomon, <clears throat> Solomon used his wisdom and knowledge to write a lot of the books in Proverbs. And, this, and these are the results that Solomon wrote for us. These are, like I said, these are not God's promises, but they are two things. Human generalization, that if I do A, chances are B will happen. And also because Solomon asked God for wisdom and knowledge, God anointed, God anointed Solomon with wisdom and knowledge. And that makes the book of Proverbs a divine writing. Because he wrote this under the anointing. He wrote this under the anointing of God. He wrote this under the inspiration of God. Mind you, again now, these are not the promises of God. These are not the promises of God. But 90%, if I do A, B will happen. A generalization under the spiritual, watchful eye of God Almighty. So he wrote in Proverbs chapter 18, a brother offended is harder, is harder. And what Solomon is doing here, he's trying to persuade us not to be the offender. Because he's showing us the difficulty of winning our brother, of winning our sisters back if we offend someone. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. I don't know if you've ever been in the military or not. You march into a city. Matter of fact, uh, Ukraine is a good example. 
Russia stormed into the city, into the country of Ukraine. And now Russia is having a difficult time taking over that city. The Ukrainians, they are refusing to give up what they feel is right. And that is the same problem that we will have if we are the offender. If we offend someone and God works with our heart for us to repent, and we, and we repent. We come to the knowledge of knowing what we did as an offender was wrong. And now we are going to go to our brother. I understand that scripture says that, that, that we're to forgive, that the offended, they're to forgive. And so often, most offenders, most people that's been offended, they do very well in forgiving. But to the offender, the one that has stormed into their life, they may say, I, I forgive. They may say, okay, I understand. But do they really understand 100%? More times than they know. They still have that wall. They still have that moat in front of them. They're going to be watching closer, and they're going to be listening even closer. Let's read on. It says this, then a strong city and their what? Contentions are like the bars of a castle. In other words, it's going to take a lot to convince them that you are not going to do it again. That's what that means. It's going to take a lot for them to believe that you are not going to do that again. And when we look at this scripture, the person that's been offended, they're not going to keep it to themselves. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19. They're not going to keep it to themselves. They're going to go and tell someone what you have done or what you did to them. And they're going to convince that person that they talk to, that the offender is wrong. And now the offender not only has to win this person over, but now the offender is going to have to win the other person over. This is, this is what's so devastating about the offender damaging someone. And it makes that strong city that Solomon was talking about, it makes it that much more difficult. Instead of trying to bring back the one that he offended, now he has to bring back two, three, or maybe even more that he offended. And the reason for that, the reason for that is because of spirit. A spirit. If we ever get to the point where we have been offended, or if we can look at the offender and say within ourselves, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. Everybody say that tonight. It's a spirit. And you know, that's what it is most of the time. It's a spirit. If I come down all this pulpit and begin to, to, to offend some of you one way or another, either through my words or through my actions, it's a spirit that is in me. It's a spirit. So, from now on, Bethany, if someone step on your toes with their words, or if someone just invade your home, and when I say home, I'm talking about you, this right here, your personal life, and they do damage, damage so severely that you feel that you cannot forgive them, Tell yourself it's a spirit. And that will make it easier for you to, to, to begin the healing process of the damage that that person has caused you. Just tell them it's, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. And that's all it is. It's just a spirit. And, and, and when it's a spirit, we're telling ourselves that that person that did that to me may not be totally responsible for his actions. 
and we can find it easier to forgive that person. Uh, when we think about the man that was in the graveyard, how he was cutting himself, and the writer says, uh, 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 Jesus went there and cast him out. Do, do we remember that scripture? And Jesus said, what is your name? And this man, and the man that was cutting himself, and he's breaking all the fetters. What was his name? What did he say? What was his name? Legion. Do we know what legions are? Do we know what a legion is? A legion in the Roman army consists of about 6,000 men. So, if we use that, if, if, if we use that, that example, we can say that this man had over 6,000 demons in him. How do you know it, Edel Floyd? Because I'm using a military term here in the United States. A squad consists of... Uh, uh, <laughs> L.R. Ned, you might help me out on this. Now, I haven't been in the series for a while. But a squad consists of about 10 people. And usually about five squads makes up a platoon. A platoon consists of around 50 people. You look at a platoon of 50 people, it takes about five platoons to make up a company. So that's about 200, 300 people, soldiers. With the five platoon making up one company, it takes about five companies to make up a battalion. So what are we saying? We're saying that a legion is somewhere between a battalion and a brigade. If it takes five companies to make up a battalion, it also takes four to five battalions to make up a brigade. So can you see how possessed this man was? He said, my name is Legion. Why? Because we are what? Many. It was a somewhere between a battalion and a brigade of men inside of this one person that was in the uh, graveyard. That's when I said, it's a demon. It's a, it, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that made him act that way. It's a spirit that make us act the way we act. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, if someone is offended, if someone is offended by the offender, chances are it's going to take more than, there, there are more than one demon, more than one spirit that we have to deal with. Notice now, a strong city I'm sorry, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. They tried to bind this man, but they, uh, the right said no change or fetters could hold him because there was so many. And that's the way a strong city is. They are so fortified that it is difficult to win that city over. Because they are so fortified. When we offend someone, when we offend someone, their antennas begin to go up. And they are more fortified than anyone else because of the offense that has caused them to be the offended. And he said, what is thy name? And he answered, said, my name is Legion, 
for we are many. So, when we look at this verse in chapter 18, harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Are like the bars of a castle. In other words, the writer saying is Solomon is saying here, it's going to be next to impossible to win that person back and put that person in the state that they were in before you invaded their life. It will not be the same. That's what Solomon is saying here. It will not be the same. And if it is the same, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. Being the offender, we do not realize the damage that we do when we step on someone's toes. It's going to take more than a cake. It's going to take more than, a, than for you to bake a cake to get them back into fellowship. It's going to take more than a pie. That's not going to do it. No, it's not. No, it's not. When a person has been offended, it may help, but it's, not, it's going to take more than that because they are now a stronghold. The offended, their pride, their hopes, their admiration has been damaged. I, I, I looked at someone and I had high regards for them. But now they have shattered everything that I have felt for them. The wife loved the husband, waited on him hand and foot, and the husband became the offender. And the wife's heart is shattered. She will never be the same after that because she had been offended. I got someone on a pedestal and I think they can do no wrong. But for no reason, they invade my life. They, 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 they cross over the line that they shouldn't have crossed. They went just a tad too far. And now they want to, to, to make amends. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Because now you have to go in and win this city over again. Now it has become a strong city. It has become a strong city. And now you have to fight. Now you have to take the time. It's going to take a lot more effort to build up what this person originally felt for you. You have destroyed, you have caused damage within this person's life. And now it's going to take a lot of effort to build back the feelings, the emotion of how this person felt. Oh, they may look okay, but that person is not okay because of the damage that the offender has done. The offender. This is what's so devastating. And, and Solomon, being the wise man that he was, he saw this. How did he see it? He saw it through the anointing of God. When someone invade our lives like that to make it easier to deal with, we need to tell ourselves it's a spirit. It's a spirit. You ought to be able to look at your neighbor tonight and tell them it's a spirit. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a spirit. And you know, when we get in the process, when we get in the habit of saying that, that will make forgiving and that will help us to conquer the city that we invaded. That will help us 
to, to pull down some of the barriers that the offended has placed in front of me. You said, it's, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. That's all it is. It's a spirit that has come and, and, and done this damage to me. Just look at somebody again and, and, and just tell them, it, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. That, that's all it is. It's just a spirit that's compelling them to do that. One writer says this, and this is talking to the offended. Be ye angry and sin not. All the, I'm not, let me back up. A lot of the scriptures that we read in the Bible, they're talking to the offended. Very few of them are, are talking to the offender. And then those that are talking to the offender, we use them and apply it to the offended. But the offender has a lot of responsibility to stop going out offending folks. They have a lot of responsibility not to do this. Be ye angry and sin not. That is talking to the offended. Be ye angry. So the writer saying, okay, someone invade my turf, they cross my line, they knock the chip off my shoulder, so I become angry. That's okay. You're supposed to become angry. Yes, you are. If someone slap you across the face, like we saw a few nights ago on television, he handled it real well. Matter of fact, Chris Rock handled it a lot better than what we would have handled it. <laughs> yes, he did. He handled it very well. But I'm sure he had some kind of anger in him. And, and, and he was going by the scripture. Be ye anger and do what? Sin not. So the writer pretty much is telling us here that we have a right, if we are offended, we have a right to be angry, to get angry, as long as we don't sin with it. And then what else does it say? Let not what? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun, what? Go down on your what? On your wrath. What is wrath? It's a higher level of anger, is it not? I'm angry, but if I got wrath, I'm really, really angry. And I'm looking to get even. Someone step on my toes, I'm going to punch you in your face. Someone punch me in my face, I'm looking to do more damage. This is what he's talking about here. That is all, that all is intended to the offended. The one that's been offended. But what about the offender? What about the one that slapped Chris Rock in the face? Chris Rock is the one that has to go home. He's the one that has to watch every night, several times a night, how he came up and slapped him in the face. He's the one that's have to receive all the jokes about being hit, comparing him with a woman for not fighting back. These are the things that he has to deal with. Sure it is. But look at the offender. He's the one that's going to be patted on the back. Everyone telling him that he did a good job. He's the one that's going to be going to parties and all. So what about the offender? Now, the problem that he has now is this. The problem the offender has now is this. The one that he slapped is going back and trying to make everything right. Trying to make everything as it was before the slap occurred. Can you see what the writer is saying here now? In order to win Chris Rock back, can you imagine the job he's going to have trying to do this? 
it's going to be harder to win a brother back than to what? Win over a strong city. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Wouldn't it have been something if Curse Rock turned around and said, okay, that was a spirit. That was a spirit. That was a spirit. I know the offender. Usually he's not like that. But I know it was the spirit in him that caused him to do that. And you know, saints, whenever we look at it from that point of view, that would bring about healing. Not only for the offended, but also for the offender. Yes, it will. When we look at it and say, okay, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that's compelling him to do this. It's a spirit that has set up that has set up a household in him. And chances are the offender for that particular moment, for that particular moment, has got a spirit in him that is not like God. That is not like God. And the longer that spirit stays in him, the more that spirit is going to multiply. Just like this man that was out there cutting himself. The chain and fetters could not hold him. And Jesus walked up to him and said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. Why? Because he's been out there a long time. And all of these spirits, they gathered within him. And he had over 6,000 spirits in him. Legion. He used the same example that I used up here during the military, which added up to around 6,000, 5,000 to 6,000. And within the Roman army, that's what he was talking about, within the Roman army, legion denotes that it was around 6,000, if not more, spirits that was in him. And with that kind of spirit, it took one thing for him to be free. And that was Jesus. Whenever we get these spirits in us, I don't know how many, but just one spirit maybe. But I guarantee you got more than one spirit that's doing damage in you, in us. That spirit can take such a stronghold in us that it will take Jesus to get that spirit out. And how do we get that spirit out? Fasting and prayer. You have to come to the realization that what you did as an offender was wrong. You have to come to the realization that you have hurt someone. And the hurt that you caused in someone's life, you must feel that same passion within your own heart. And that is the only way, that is the only way that stronghold can be broken. If you don't feel that passion, if you don't feel that passion that you, have call, that you have called someone to hurt, to the harm, you will never be affected into bringing that person back to the level he was or she was before the offense was started. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. If you don't recognize that it is a spirit that caused him to slap me, and the offender must realize that it was a spirit that caused me to do what I have just done, he has to realize it. In order for him to go to the offended and try to repair the havoc that he has caused in this person's life, he has, to, he has to, to, to understand that it was a spirit. It was a spirit. That spirit caused the 
offender to walk into someone's life for no reason at all, just walk in someone's life and do what he wanted to do, bring about havoc. person minding their own business and you cause, you walk in and cause them to have a bad day because of a spirit that is in you. And that spirit took control just for a brief moment. It took control. And that spirit calls you not to be concerned about that person at all. And the only thing that you were concerned about by being the offender was yourself. Not caring about anything else or anyone else, but just yourself. And now you are trying to win them back. And in order to win them back, in order to win the offended back, bring them back into the fold, back into your fellowship, Solomon says, a brother offended is harder to be won. So now the offender, he has a job to do. He has a job to do. He has a very difficult job to do, if not impossible. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city than a strong city. Notice now in that same verse, I like this. I like this. After we read a brother, offend, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Notice now, and there, T-H-E-I-R, their contentions, notice now, their contentions. Can you see the, the elevation by this one offense, and now it's beginning to elevate. Talking about there, and now it's talking about contentions. So now it's beginning to multiply. It's beginning to multiply. It's beginning to enlarge. There. At first it was, what, a brother and a strong city. Now it's talking about there, T-H-E-R, more than one. And now it's talking about contentions, not contention, but contentions, more than one. This is what's so bad about being an offender. When you create a problem, it's going to cause, it's going to create more problems. It's going to create more problems. It's going to increase your workload when you try to make amends. It's going to take more than you going back apologizing, saying, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me? It's going to take more than that. Because this thing here is beginning to grow. It's beginning to balloon. It's beginning to enlarge now. It's beginning to become a strong city. Not necessarily a city, but a strong city. And when you try to take over a strong city, it's going to be a lot of resistance. Yes, it will be. They may tell you, they may tell us to take our, I'm sorry, and do whatever they want you to do with it. That's how, that's how, all the, uh, 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 that's how enlarged it may become. So whenever we are the offender, whenever we are the offender, and we find ourselves offended someone, we need to go drop on our knees and ask God, Lord God, help me. Help me. I was wrong. That's what we need to tell ourselves. I was wrong. It was a spirit. I'm not trying to pass the blame or anything else, but I know that deep down I'm not like that, and it was the Spirit that caused me to do that. And Lord God, I need strength. I need strength right now to help me to recognize that it was the Spirit 
And by me recognizing there was a spirit in me that compelled me to do this, I can stop it before I go out and offend someone else. That's what we need to do. When I feel that this spirit is trying to take control of me, when he's trying to take control of my heart, when he's trying to take control of my action, give me the wisdom and knowledge to recognize what this thing is inside of me. If I recognize it, I can stop it right then and there. I can stop it before it goes into action. That's what we need to do. And we need to call it out just as it is. It's a spirit, and it's not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of the adversary. It's the spirit of the adversary. That's all it is. If I yell at my wife, it's a spirit. If I yell at my dog, it's a spirit. If I yell at the kids, it's a spirit. If the boss yell at me, it's a spirit. That's all it is. It's a spirit. Boss yell at me, it's a spirit. And that will make me more receptive. Well, I will not yell back at him. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It will keep me from retaliating when I recognize that it is a spirit. Because I look at my boss and I say, no, that's not like you. You being motivated by a spirit that is in you, and you are out of control. Now I know it's a spirit. That's how we need to handle these things. It's a spirit. Look at somebody and tell them, it's a spirit. <laughs> it's a spirit. Do you believe it's a spirit tonight that calls us to do things that we don't want to do? When that spirit got in Paul, that's what Paul said. When I Know to do right. I forget exactly how it goes, but he said, when I know to do right and I don't do, it's a spirit that's compelling them. And it took God. It took God. It took God to be in control where Paul could control himself. What is your name? My name is Legion because we are many. He didn't act that way all the time, but every now and then it would flare up in him, causing him to do stuff that he did not want to do. Have you ever done things that you did not want to do? And after you have done those things, you regretted that you did those things? We all have. I raise my hand up. I raise my hand up. But tonight, when we leave here tonight, and go about our separate ways. We can tell it tonight, say, it's a spirit. And when you go out as an offender, when you go and try to make amends to the people that you have offended, you may have to tell them. It's just saying, well, I don't know what got into me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know now what got into you. Oh, yes, you do. You do tonight. After tonight, you cannot say that. You can go back and tell them, it was a spirit that got into me. A spirit that I do not like. Pray for me that I can recognize what kind of spirit that is before it will cause any damage, not only to me, but to someone that I care about, to someone that I love. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. So can you see now that when we are the offender and we go out and try to make amends, try to clear things up, can you see now, can you understand now why it's so difficult for someone to let us back into their lives? Why, uh, how someone will reject our apologies or please forgive me. Yes. Hope, hope this clears it up some for you. Because, like we said before, according to chapter 18 and verse 19, this thing here started small, but now it has grown. It has grown. It was just a city. Now it's a strong city. Yeah. 
Now it's a strong city. It's a big city. It's fortified now. Not only is it a big city, but the buildings in this city, they got, you know, it's almost like a castle. They got the defenses up now. They got the bars up to the window now. They got the defenses up. So now when I go in, it's going to take some effort for me to get in. And if it's a strong city and I cannot conquer it, I cannot get through the bars, what's my other alternative? They are going to have to open it up so that I can get in. That's what it's going to take. Instead of me fighting and whatever, trying to get into them, we are going to have to be savvy enough where they will open up the city. Open up the castle. Let the bridge down where I can walk across the moat. Take some of the bars off the windows. Take some of the bars off the doors where I can just walk in and make repairs. That's what the writer's talking about. That's what the writer's talking about. Solomon, he asked God, he said, I want wisdom and knowledge. And the reason he wanted this, the reason he wanted this, I think God gave him the foresight where he could look into the future. And he saw people like us, people like you and people like me. Well, we needed this. He knew that we needed this. And he wrote this especially for us. Not only is this a human generalization, the man is not a promise of God, but it's a human generalization. And he goes one step further. Not only is it a human generalization, that if I do A, B will happen, but it is a divine generalization from God because God put his anointing on this. He put his anointing on this. Solomon was so much on target. He was so much in agreeable, being agreeable with God. God said, Solomon, that's right. You got it. And he put his stamp. God put his stamp of approval on the book of Proverbs, his anointing. And said, Solomon, I totally agree with what you have written here. You are totally on target. And Solomon, I'm going to put this in my book. I'm going to sign your name to it, letting you know that this is my anointing. It's a spirit. Anytime, excuse my words, excuse the word my brother said, anytime we act a fool, and some of us do, a lot of us do, anytime we act that way, God is never pleased. And you will never win anyone over. And the more spirit you get in you as an offender, the more people you're going to offend. And when we go from here and here and here and there, offending different folks in the church, it will become more and more difficult for people to take you serious. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. What is thy name? Don't let your name be legion, for we are many. I got about five minutes left. There was a prayer that says this, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a prayer we should say every day. Just as the offender has a responsibility to stop offending, the offended also has a responsibility. And that's in this prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. In other words, the offender says here, I was on the receiving end, but there are folks that I have hurt also. So, Lord God, forgive me 
my sins. Forgive me my sins as we forgive those who has trespassed against us. I hope I've made it clear tonight the responsibility the responsibility of the offender and how difficult it is for the offender to bring back and make amends. The offender, he went out and he just broke the door down and caused havoc within someone's life. And when he left that household, when he left that body, that person, the offender, was left alone to make all the repairs that was done within them. And the offender, he went about causing more offense, destroying someone else's life. It just doesn't seem right. And God knows. But God has given us a responsibility, not only as the offender, but also as the offended. We know what we must do when someone offends us, do we not? And that's right, I agree with that. I totally agree with it. Because that is for our own healing. That is for us. That is for us. But when the offender comes into our life, it's going to be a lot more difficult to forgive the offender as it would be anyone else. Because the offender, he's caused a lot of damage. And as the offender, what is our responsibility? Stop offending. That's our responsibility. And how can we stop offending? By telling ourselves what? What, what, what are we going to tell ourselves? It's what? Let's say it loud. <laughs> it's what? It's a, it's a spirit. What's make, what, what is making you act the way you act? That's not of God. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. You see something inside of a store and you decide that you don't want to pay for that. You put it in your pocket and walk out the store with it. What, what's motivating that? It's a spirit. It's a spirit. If you beat up on your wife and hit her and think it's okay because she's your wife, it's what? Spirit. And don't think church folks do that. Church folks beat their wives all the time. Yes, they do. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Give some out a good old-fashioned tongue lashing. It's what? A spirit. Lay your Holy Ghost down and pick it up later on. What's caused you to lay your Holy Ghost down, if possible? It's a spirit. That's what's motivating all that. Let's stand on our feet tonight, if you will. Just look at your neighbor and tell him, it's a spirit. I know, it's a spirit. <laughs> tell him, it's a spirit. I know, it's a spirit. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise tonight. I got a little bit more I wanted to share with you, but it's almost 7 o'clock. Once again, Lord God, we thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, just for watching over, for keeping us tonight. We thank you, Lord God, once again, not only for this Bible study, but also, Lord God, for this broadcast. Continue, Lord God, to bless and anoint the word as it goes out over this podium. We thank you once again, Lord God, for blessing the teacher of the hour tonight. Continue, Lord God, to watch over our pastor, Bishop G.W. Fraser, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to strengthen his body, uplift his spirit, and encourage his heart, Lord God. Give him a speed of recovery, Lord God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word is said, Lord God, that by your stripes we're healed. And we claim that healing right now, Lord God, in your precious name. Continue, Lord God, to bless Sister Frazier also. Give her strength, Lord God, and give her the surrender of knowing, Lord God, that you are the finisher and the source of our faith, the source of our strength. Give her, Lord God, the mindset, Lord God, where she can also go on, Lord God, keeping her house, attending to Bishop Frazier, Lord God, going on her job. She's got a lot on the plate, Lord God. Help her right now. Help her to endure. And we give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
shake someone. Uh, I'm sorry, don't shake. <laughs> Let's not forget about social distancing. Amen. Amen.